the numbers here are enormous. I mean, even the child labour numbers are at four million. We've got 250,000 kids living on the street. I mean, they're, they're not small numbers, there's no doubt about it. Come <laughs> Hi. Hi. They are the street-based kids who are living on the streets, uh, neglected, abused. I'm the Chief of Child Protection for UNICEF in the Philippines. So our, our program goes all across the whole of the Philippines. We deal with um, all the different forms of exploitation, so the trafficking, the child sex tourism, the sexual exploitation of, of children, um, down to children that are in conflict with the laws. Trafficking in children is the second biggest trade in the world. It's only second to drug trafficking. So the amount of billions of dollars that are raised throughout the world um, just to buy and sell children is enormous. The US State Department estimates 800,000 women and children are trafficked every year in and out of the Philippines. With funding from AusAid, UNICEF is working closely with Filipino agencies on an ever-widening range of programs to address the issue, like this drop-in shelter for boys in central Manila. Our policy in what we call the recovery shelter is a voluntary open door policy. So every child who's here is here because they want to be here. This what do you put on it to make it smell? Um, scent. They have um, a psychologist that's here and they have social workers that work with them and their families. Um, but most of these, these boys don't really have families that are accepting of them. So this is a way for them to still get their education and to keep out of trouble. Education is the key and Natalie and her UNICEF team are engaged in numerous alternative pathways. One of these is an open-air classroom for street kids. They're 15, 16 and 17 and they're studying. What are they studying today? Even with these boys, we haven't given up on them in spite of their age. And they're very willing to learn given the motivation. They're working very hard yeah, today. Yeah. This alternative approach to education gives the kids access to learning, even in their difficult circumstances. school in a converted church is adjacent to Smoky Mountain, where tens of thousands scavenge for a living on Manila's largest dump site. Estimates put the population of surrounding slums at 600,000. Most of them are working with their families on the dump site. There's only one high school in this whole area and tens of thousands of children, so this is a very small contribution to a very large issue. It's a great opportunity, but you see the size of the area outside. We've only been able to accommodate 104. Really, since the financial crisis, we've found an increase in families that are actually living on the streets. In inner city Manila, it's not just street kids, but entire families whose home is a sheet of plastic against the wall. <laughs> We've got a mobile educator who's doing educational classes for the kids that live on the street. Inside the van it's a multi-purpose van, it has DVD players, computers, even wireless internet inside. Um, and it enables our educators, our street educators, to deliver classes wherever. UNICEF directs the most vulnerable children into facilities with 24-hour care. It's a home for uh, orphans, abandoned, neglected, labor exploited, uh, vi uh, witnesses to heinous crimes, street children. So the Australian Football Federation gave us the jerseys yeah. and the, um, the A-League footballs. They play soccer, they play basketball, uh, our training uh, skills are cosmetology, carpentry, wood trades, sewing, electronics. And then we have a ready job placement for them. 
When the sun sets on Manila, another group of children starts working. On some of the world's busiest streets, children as young as five are surviving by the few pesos they get for hailing taxis and buses for passengers. Keeping an eye on their well-being is a former street kid who's now a UNICEF peer educator. So when the passenger and the taxi driver uh, says it's okay because it's more cheaper, so then the, the contract is good, so they, they get paid for that. But Butch actually was originally was one of the street children that was helped um, by one of the projects. That was over 15 years ago now, so he's been now doing this for over 15 years. And he's brilliant at it, and probably because he understands, he has empathy with these children, um, he manages to get them on board and, and help them very successfully to either change their lives or to get them services and help. Most have been abandoned by their parents. Their other options are petty crime or starvation. They sleep in parks and use the bathrooms of fast food restaurants. They look at these kids as uh, the dregs of society. So nobody would really understand it. So UNICEF, what they're doing now is uh, funding us, helping us, so that this kid will be aware of their, how to protect themselves against abuses. In one of our programs now, we also use ex-child sex workers to work with kids that are actually in child sex work right now to try and help them um, get through what they're going through. And it seems to work. It's like peer-to-peer. It's a far cry from traditional forms of education, but is a vital part of the work of Natalie and her Filipino team as they help these children find a path out of poverty. I want to help them all, but, but I think um, the possibility of being able to help at least one child in that day gets me going, because you don't know who that child's going to be.